As darkness falls, electric lights light up the city. It is almost as if the stars have fallen on earth and decorated our world. Electricity has become one of our lifebloods for survival in today's world. It is almost impossible to imagine a world without it. We are so used to it being there that we realize its importance only when there is a power cut. Electrical power is a little bit like the air we breathe. We don't think about it until it is missing. It is a well-proven fact that power plays a fundamental role in the economic development process of a country. All countries seek to ensure a supply of electricity that is affordable, reliable and secure in order to sustain modern ways of living. Most of the world's electricity is generated using non-renewable energy sources such as fossil fuels like coal, gas and oil and radioactive substances such as uranium. Burning fossil fuels remains the easiest and most cost-effective way of producing electricity. Over 90% of India's generating capacity is government-owned. 70% of that by state boards, 30% by the central government. About 70% of all power comes from thermal plants, mostly coal-powered. 26% is hydroelectric and 3% nuclear. Today, KPCL is having 2,860 megawatt of hydro power generation and 2 megawatt of wind generation and 1,260 megawatt of thermal power that is at Raichu. The six units of 210 megawatt power is providing as a base load station in Karnataka. Rightly for a state like Karnataka which is marching ahead in the industrial front, dependable energy and base load stations are required. Karnataka was the first state to take the lead in the power reforms. It was the first state in the country to begin hydel generation and the first state to set up a separate power generation corporation, Karnataka Power Corporation Limited or KPCL. Thirty years back, our uh, government has separated the generation and the distribution. Distribution and transmission is a KPTCL and generation is KPCL, this is Karnataka Power Corporation Limited. The main role of KPCL was to handle the planning, construction, operation and maintenance of power projects. KPCL today manages 30 dams and 18 power stations with an install capacity of 3,628 megawatts, generating annually 16,513 million units of power. A dedicated workforce of 7,700 professionals, managed by Efficient Human Resources Department, shares a vision of KPCL. Technocrats, administrators and supporting staff have joined hands to give more power to Karnataka. Initially, KPCL confined itself to Heidel projects which were heavily dependent on the monsoons. A failure in the monsoons meant a deficit in power. Also, the demand for power was rapidly rising. To meet this demand and also to have a proper hydrothermal mix, KPCL for the first time ventured to install and commission a thermal power station near Raichur as a source for alternative power. When KPCL was established in 1970, it was predominantly a hydro generating station. During the year 1980, for the first time, KPCL took the challenge of putting thermal stations in order to provide quality power to the people of Karnataka. There were three main reasons why Raichu was chosen. The first one was that the government needed to acquire huge acres of land. Second was that the plant had to have easy access to coal and water and last but not the least to put Raichur on the road to development. This is how the Raichur Thermal Power Station came into being in 1980. The Raichur Thermal Power Station is situated at a distance of 18 kilometers from Raichur town 
on the right bank of River Krishna. The project covers an area of 3,250 acres and is in the vicinity of the National Highway and Railway Line. Coal requirement is met by Singareni Collieries and Western Collieries Limited. About 4.25 cumex of water is assured throughout the year for the entire project from the adjacent Krishna River. RTPS was planned in three stages, each of 2 into 210 megawatts capacity. The first stage consisting of units 1 and 2, each of 210 megawatts was completed by March 1985 and March 1986 respectively. The government of Karnataka allocated funds for units 1 and 2. Being the first thermal power station, KPCL had to face initial teething problems, which resulted in an implementation period of 7 years. Units 3 and 4 were taken up for execution by availing World Bank and Japan Overseas Economic Cooperation Fund assistance and were commissioned during the years 1991 and 1994. With the experience gained in execution of Units 1 and 2, KPCL completed the implementation of Unit 3 in a little over four years and that of Unit 4 in less than four years. After the successful completion of Units 3 and 4, KPCL started work on Units 5 and 6 on a fast-track basis in the year 1995. This was mainly due to the liberalization of the power sector and the opening of the power sector to independent power producers. KPCL, in order to retain its monopoly, had to orient itself to revive its growth prospects by obtaining required funds from commercial banks, financial institutions, and executing projects in a more professional manner. The first four stations, we got the government budgetary support. But the fifth and sixth unit, for the first time in the history of KPCL, was implemented 100% on commercial borrowings. With contract management group and with dedication and teamwork, KPCL was in a position to complete these projects on record. Prior to 1995, KPC relied heavily on state funding and from external agencies like World Bank. From 1995 onwards, we have been able to leverage our performance and our track record and attract funding from commercial banks and financial institutions for our new projects like RTPS, Units 5, 6 and 7. The pace and success of the Fast Track RTPS expansion scheme of Units 5 and 6 has inspired and motivated KPCL to further expand the thermal station by adding on Unit 7. With an install capacity of 210 megawatts and 1400 mega units per annum, KPCL is geared up to commission Unit 7 in a record 28 to 30 months. On complete, successful completion of Unit 5 and 6, uh, this is the lesson we have learned. That is, number one, public sector undertakings can perform. Number two, EPC approach is not sacrosanct. Number three, project should be well funded in the beginning itself. The financial closure for such projects must be completed before we start the job and good contract management pace and finally commercial borrowing instill cost and time consciousness among each and every player in the implementation. 
RTPS is today ranked among the top five thermal power stations in the country in terms of output efficiency and efficiency parameters. It has also the distinction of implementing a 210 megawatts unit in the country in the fastest time possible. The magnitude of this task can be appreciated by understanding the various aspects of its functioning. RTPS today is Karnataka's first thermal power station with 1260 megawatts under one roof. In order to understand the importance of RTPS's role in generation of electricity, we need to know how a thermal power station works. By taking RTPS as an example, we shall see how electricity is generated by a thermal power station. The first step in the process is meeting the coal requirements. RTPS's requirement of coal per day is 12,000 to 14,000 tons for the four units and 16,000 to 18,000 tons for unit 6. Coal supply for units 1 to 4 is procured from Singareni collieries in Andhra Pradesh and Western coal fields in Maharashtra. Coal linkage for the expansion units 5 and 6 is from Mahanadi coal fields in Talcha, Orissa. The coal is made available by the Standing Linkage Committee of Government of India. Coal purchase and freight charges constitute the single largest items of expenditure in the running of thermal power station. We are drawing more than 3,000 tons per unit. Since we are having a 6 units, approximately we are drawing, we are consuming 16,000 metric tons to 20,000 metric tons. Day. You can imagine the per ton it cost about 1600 rupees approximately in coding freight charges. It works out to be more than 3 crores per day. That means our total requirement will be more than 800 crores in a year. Coal supply for units 5 and 6 is met through a unique rail sea rail route. Coal is to be transported from Talcher to Paradeep by rail, Paradeep to Chennai by sea, and from Chennai to Raichur again by rail. Coal from the two collieries is transported to a nearby mainline station. From here on, the RTPS engine tows the bogies laden with coal into the RTPS marshalling yard. Here the coal is sprayed with water in order to reduce the dust and to reduce the heat in the coal. The reason being, coal in its raw form is easily combustible and when exposed to the sun can catch fire and lose all the energy stored in it. A coal is such a commodity which cannot be stored for a long period in an open area until and unless it has been taken care of. Then what are the precautions to do? to be adopted or the precautions to be taken while storing. It has to be com compacted as much as possible so that air should not enter into the heaps of the coal stock head or otherwise the instantaneous fire will go on spoiling the coal quality until we lose it. So the precautions taken in the storing is compaction of the coal and as and when required, the both sprinkling of water sprinkling and compaction go, go together. After the coal has been sprayed with water, the container is taken to the tippling yard. Coal tippling is a process by which a giant claw-shaped machine called the tippler is used to grip the lower and upper ends of the coal-laden bogey and tilt it exactly at an angle of 180 degrees. This process can empty the whole cargo of coal in a smooth and efficient manner. The coal tippler is computer controlled and data like weight of the coal in the container to be tippled is fed in order to adjust the grip of the tippler accordingly. Once the data has been fed into the computer, the bogies are automatically readied for tippling. After the water has been sprayed on the coal laden bogie, the coal tippler grips the bogie 
and tilts it at an angle of 180 degrees. A spray of water is released as the coal is being released so as to reduce the coal dust from being let into the atmosphere. And the coal is emptied onto the conveyor belt below. After the coal has been emptied onto the conveyor belt, the coal is transported to the coal crushing unit. In the coal crushing unit, the coal is crushed into a fine powder. This powdered coal is burnt in a boiler in order to convert water into steam. Boiler per unit requires more than 120 to 130 tons per hour. That means for a minute we have to burn more than 2 tons of coal per boiler. Is it possible to burn 2 tons? Every minute we have to burn continuously. We have to burn per day, even per month. Regularly we have to, it is a continuous process. If you, if you, if you think on that line, it has to be burned within a two minute, two minute, uh, once, uh, one minute only, two, two tons of coal has to be burned in one minute only. Because next minute another two ton is going to in the boiler. So that boiler is designed in such a way that it has to burn full quantity, required quantity to generate 210 megawatts. Accordingly it is, it is designed. And the entire process will be monitored by the control engineers who are sitting in the unit control room. Water is another important resource which is needed to run the thermal power plant. The water should be free of impurities. This is the reason distilled water is used. Water is pumped up from the Krishna river and converted into distilled water. This water is then pumped into the reservoir. A typical boiler is the place where the water is boiled to make steam. It is made up of a hundred miles of pipe, all welded together and has a reservoir at the top. The pipes are there to ensure that there is a better heat flow from the fire to the water. The reservoir at the top collects the steam to deliver to a high pressure turbine. A furnace, which is the boiler, holds all the pipes together and is usually 14 stories high. A fuel is injected into the furnace and burns. Typically the bottom six stories are just for the fire. The heat rises to the pipe of the boiler and heats the water to make steam. The steam is under pressure and very hot. In fact, it will rise to 1,800 pounds per square inch, that is PSI, and approximately 1,000 degrees centigrade. The energy is taken from the steam in the turbine and it is sent to a condenser. The condenser returns a leftover steam to water and a pump sends it back to the boiler. The leftover steam is hot and must be re-liquefied before the pump can send it back to the boiler. Before re-liquefying the steam, the heat in the steam is used to heat up the water which enters the furnace. pipe then feeds the high pressure steam generated in the boiler to a turbo generator. A turbo generator uses a kinetic or reactionary energy from the steam to spin the shaft. This shaft is connected to an electrical generator and produces electricity as it turns.
the turbo generator runs at a speed of 3600 revolutions per minute and generates 210 megawatts of power. Our plant has been consistently getting the fuel oil consumption awards for reduced specific oil consumption and also minimum auxiliary power consumption. And our availability of the units is around 90% and the plant load factor is around 82%. We have been adopting beautiful and modern practices in operation and maintenance which is conclusively has decided in CA being favoring us with all these meritorious awards. Our plant has got a lot of things here and meeting our state's demand to an extent of 30% of our state's demand. A condenser converts the spent steam from the turbine back to water, which is reused in the boiler. The condenser cooling water comes from the cooling tower and flows into the reservoir and is returned for reuse. To run a single generator, a series of motors and pumps are used. All these motors and pumps are controlled from a single main control unit. The Raichur Thermal Power Station is a fully computerized one. Processes like monitoring of coal field, water-fed pumps, running of motors, dumping of ash and the working of the turbo generator is all computer controlled. The computers are operated using touch screen technology. All the computers are connected to a mainframe which ensures that information is constantly stored and disseminated as and when required. The use of computers to run the plant has ensured optimum use of raw materials like coal and water and also the manpower. This is how a thermal power plant like RTPS is able to generate power by proper management of the available resources. In order to ensure a constant supply of coal RTPS is equipped with a stockyard capable of storing 6 lakh metric tons of coal. The stockyard also has provision for the crushed coal to be stored. About 2 to 3 lakh metric tons of coal is always stored at the stockyard in order to meet the daily requirements. Since the coal will lose all its energy if stored for more than 24 hours, the coal is constantly used and replaced with fresh stock so as to help retain its energy or calorific value. Proper management of ash is necessary for a project of RTPS's magnitude. At RTPS, ash is led into an ash pond both in slurry and dry ash forms. Silos have also been constructed to collect dry ash. KPCL is promoting an aggressive policy for fly ash utilization. The present output of ash is around 8,000 tons per day from six units. KPCL is utilizing fly ash for all civil engineering works in plant and colony besides offering it to small-scale industrial units for the manufacture of bricks and cement. ACC, the leading cement manufacturer, has entered into a long-term arrangement with KPCL to utilize 3 lakh tons of fly ash per annum to manufacture cement. RTPS is supplying fly ash to cement companies at almost free of cost. KPCL has constructed three fly ash collection units for the remaining four power generation units. Fly ash is transported as and when it accumulates in the collection unit. A center for fly ash utilization technology and environment conservation at RTPS under Indo-Norwegian environmental program has been established at a cost of rupees 58 million. The combustion of coal results in exhaust gases containing carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxides and particulates. With modern technologies and strict controls, it is possible to remove most of the carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxides before they are emitted from the power plant. To do this, each unit has got an electrostatic precipitator. These electrostatic precipitators will suppress the ash and prevent the fumes released by the exhaust gases from being released into the atmosphere. This purified exhaust gas will be released in the air at 290 meters above the ground level through chimneys. There are totally six chimneys of varied heights. Chimney for unit 1 and 2 is 119 meters and 4, 5 and 6 and 7 is 219 meters. 
the fifth and sixth chimneys are built together in one mold. The last bucket of cement to be used for the construction for chimney number no. 7 was placed by the Minister for Energy for the state of Karnataka, Sri Veer Kumar A. Patil, in the month of December 2001. Construction of chimney is considered as one of the milestones in the construction of the power station. And then this ash is mixed with hot water and will be pumped to an ash pond. RTPS has two ash ponds. One was constructed in the year 1983, which is almost filled up now. After it fills up, the ash will be dumped in the second ash pond. The total area of this ash pond is about 300 acres. To avoid the spreading of the ash into the adjoining areas of the ash pond, the ash pond is covered with morum and some vegetation is planted on it. This is to ensure that the soil does not lose its fertility. The water used in the power generation will be finally let out into the river again. But before leaving it into the river, the water is first purified and analysed for leaching action and potability, etc. A full-fledged research and development lab has been set up within the RTPS plant in order to maintain quality and pollution control. The lab is equipped with the latest quality and pollution detecting instruments that technology has to offer. The lab daily collects a water sample from the Krishna River from different locations and is analyzed for heavy metal, pH value, etc. We are treating the effluents in a required manner at the standards of Ministry of Environment as well as also Karnataka Pollution Control Board. This is what has ensured that RTPS is not only one of the best thermal power plants in the country, but one of the most environment friendly ones too. RTPS contributes to a quarter of the state's electricity requirements. The steady availability of power in the state is basically dependent on the operational capability of RTPS. The All India average for thermal power stations is 64% plant load factor. But RTPS has achieved a plant load factor of 81.74% for the year 1998-1999. Raichur Thermal Power Station is the only super power thermal station in our state and it is getting awards for the last 15 years continuously for a high plant load factor above 80% and low fuel oil consumption. In for the year 98-99 we have also got the meritorious award of silver medal to this project. RTPS has won meritorious national awards consistently since 1988 for its high plant load factor. RTPS has performed consistently well over the last five years and has helped in meeting the shortfall in hydel power generation. In efficiency parameters like coal and oil consumption, RTPS has shown continuous improvement to meet the best standards in the industry. Four years ago, a group of engineers from DQE, a US-based company involved in power generation, had visited the RTPS plant and were very impressed with its functioning. They were all praised for the engineers at RTPS as the expansion units 5 and 6 had adopted an auto-mechanized systems in most sections which had reduced its dependability on labor-oriented extraction of work in different sections of both the units. Under an exchange program, this uh, American utility has come. They have visited uh, our uh, Raichur thermal plant and they are really impressed by seeing our engineers working. And our uh, atmosphere, environment was quite different than the American uh, atmosphere. Uh, you see, we get 80% of plant load factor under a very difficult circumstance because our coal uh, in that ash content is more, more than 30%. Whereas their coal has only 7% of ash content. Uh, by seeing this and uh, their uh, environment and our environment, the plant load factor, they are very impressed and they praised all our engineers for their excellent work they are doing under this kind of circumstance. The Corporate Communications Department of KPCL has played a pivotal role in the growth and success of RTPS as one of India's premier thermal plants. The department has constantly unveiled the multi-dimensional facets of this power-propelled plant. 
It produces and releases corporate films, develops relevant literature and documents and helps enhance the image of KPCL and RTPS through various activities. All these activities have ensured that all of RTPS's achievements have been highlighted and through different forms of media in order to keep the public informed and updated. The state of Karnataka has a proven track record of being one of the pioneering states in the country. They say that behind every successful project, there is an organization and a team of skilled manpower. In the case of RTPS, KPCL is the organization and the government is a guiding force. The expansion of units of five and six, in fact, represents KPCL's response to the challenge in the environment following the entry of independent producers into the power sector after the liberalization process was initiated in the country. The state of Karnataka has a proven track record of being one of the pioneering states in the country, which heralded growth in both economic and social sector through multifarious and effective administration and planning. The government under the leadership of the Congress party has contributed immensely to the present success of RTPS. It was only in October 2000 that Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, President of the All India Congress Party, flagged off the construction of Unit 7. Today, the almost ready chimney tower and cooling tower bear testimony to the Government and Congress Party initiatives to make RTPS an example for other public sector projects to emulate. The Chairman of KPCL is none other than SM Krishna the technology-savvy Chief Minister of the State of Karnataka, who has seen to it that RTPS continues on to meet the power requirements of the state. The Minister for Energy, Sri Veer Kumar A. Patil, too has overseen the functioning of RTPS and the progress of works on its expansion. In this last two years, when uh, our uh, Congress government came in power in Karnataka, under the leadership of SM Krishnaji, our Chief Minister, we have started our sixth unit uh, and we have taken, we have started the seventh unit, which was a long pending proposal you know, with, without any financial closure. We made the financial arrangements and we have started the work. KPCL looks confidently into the future to continue as a market leader and torch bearer of power generation in Karnataka. RTPS today is a well-planned, fully developed and eco-friendly super thermal power station with good infrastructure, colony and community facilities. A township called Shaktinagar has been developed to accommodate 2,500 families and has also been equipped with basic amenities like shopping centers, places of worship, schools and even a hospital. For any greenfield project, the land acquisition and rehabilitation will be the major problem. In RTPS 2, we face the problem during land acquisition and rehabilitation. However, we had provided the best rehabilitation package at the RTPS. We have constructed houses for the land losers. We have provided employment for the land losers. We have already covered 60% of the land losers by providing employment. In addition to that, we are also sending the dependents of the land losers for the ITA courses at our expenses. This coupled with creation of infrastructures like hospital, schools, in which the land loser family and their dependent children, they are also admitted and provided with the best education that is available for the KPCL employees. A well laid out rehabilitation centre with 284 houses has been constructed alongside the township for project affected families. Today, RTPS is confidently poised to contribute to the future needs of the state. 
RTPS is a prestigious power project in our state and we are proud of RTPS. RTPS we call it as the backbone of uh, the Karnataka state with 1260 megawatt generation capacity as a super, super thermal power station. Raichur Thermal Power Station is the only super thermal power station in the state of Karnataka. The RTPS is one amongst the 10 best plants in India. Raichur Thermal Power Station is a crown in the jewel of KPCL. We have achieved a lot of uh, national records in this particular project. RTPS project is a very prestigious project for us and I have been associated with this project for more than 20 years and it is really a pride privilege for its meeting the power demand of the entire state. RTPS, a proud project of KPCL. I feel proud to have been associated with this project.